Can we separate art from the artist? Separating art from the artist emerged in the early 20th century as new criticism. The belief was that an author's biography or inspiration for writing was not needed to appreciate their work. The new critics believed that the author's intention or morality were irrelevant and that the structure of the text was solely important. New criticism fell out of favor. Not, however, by Roland Barthes. As a structuralist, Barthes minimized individual creators, stating, It is the language which speaks, not the author. He believed that a story is not the personal voice of the author, but comes from a host of voices, including the writer, but also universal wisdom or romantic psychology. He states, The voice loses its origin. The author enters his own death. Writing begins. Barth downplays the author and gives all the focus to the reader. The true locus of writing is reading. How does this philosophy apply when the artist acts immorally? Paul Gauguin was a pedophile. He had sexual relationships with many teenage girls. The New York Times asked if he should be cancelled. In response, Vincente Todoli, a former Tate Modern director, said, The person I can totally abhor and loathe. But the work is the work. Once an artist creates something, it doesn't belong to the artist anymore. It belongs to the world. The same treatment is given to famous children's author Lewis Carroll, also a pedophile. Carroll possessed a large collection of photographs of young girls, including many nude. The bachelor Carroll was an uncle figure to the children of his acquaintances and entertained them with stories and games. His work remains popular. It really doesn't matter which way you go. William Butler Yeats, the great Irish poet, asked the question, how can we know the dancer from the dance? Unlike Barthes or the New Critics, many feel that it is impossible to separate the art from the artist. This approach is complicated when 21st century sensibilities are applied to earlier periods. Even Shakespeare is not spared by some of the racist and misogynistic imagery in his works. D.W. Griffith's film Birth of a Nation was a blockbuster in 1915 and later a staple in film study for its innovative direction, editing, and camera techniques. However, with a storyline that glorified the Ku Klux Klan and containing racist imagery, Griffith and his work is now cancelled. Similarly with Lenny Reifenstahl, whose artistic eye, sense of drama, and technical genius make her films incomparable. However, her greatest works were created in support of the Third Reich. Reifenstahl and her art are cancelled. Despite this, it is interesting to note that Susan Sontag, who despises Reifenstahl, felt compelled to state that Triumph of the Will and Olympia are undoubtedly superb films and may even be the two greatest documentaries ever made. This gets to the heart of the dilemma. The writing of Shakespeare and the films of Griffith and Reifenstahl are superb innovative art. Should they be measured by the same criteria as R. Kelly, Chris Brown, Marilyn Manson, or Louis C.K.? As Ed Siegel said, will the Vatican paint over the Sistine Chapel if they discover that Michelangelo was a homosexual? Not likely. Would it not be better to contextualize rather than cancel or destroy? It is easier to contextualize art from a distant era, such as Shakespeare. When modern artists are immoral but the content of their art does not display their unacceptable behavior, such as Gauguin and Carroll, Contextualization on the wall labels, programs, and footnotes seem more appropriate than cancelling. When the content blatantly displays the immorality of the artist, such as Reifenstahl's Nazi propaganda, the artwork gets shunned by most. But, even with this category, can there not be exceptions? When one looks beyond the artist and the content, the aesthetics and techniques are still genius. Triumph of the Will and Olympia should still be studied, not in support of Nazi revival, 
but as a study of artistic genius, again, with context. To answer the question, can we separate the art from the artist, the answer is, sometimes, when it is for the benefit of eternal and great art. R. Kelly and Chris Brown can stay canceled. What do you do when you get stuck on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Wait a minute, why can't it's I just give my maddening. opinion? This is a free country. He, he, he can give you. You have yeah. to give it so loud. I mean, aren't you ashamed to pontificate like that? And, and the funny part of it is, Marshall McLuhan, you don't know anything about Marshall McLuhan's oh, really? work. Really? Really? I happen to teach a class at Columbia called TV, Media, and Culture. So I think that my insights into Mr. McLuhan well, have a great deal of validity. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, that's funny because I happen to have Mr. McLuhan right here. So, so yeah, just let me, let me, let me, come over here a second. Oh, Tell I, heard, I heard what you were saying. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this.